Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Something Saturday where we talk about things we didn't get to talk about the rest of the week. And today we have to talk about some Deadpool 3 rumors. So let's jump right into it. Okay, so we have to talk about this theory that I keep hearing floating around. And this theory has been around ever since the very first trailer. People notice something off. Now, here's the thing. We kind of know who the main villain is supposed to be, or at least we think we do. But Marvel is very famous for trying to trick the viewers into thinking they know something and then kind of turning the tables on them. There was the hawk running through the snow. And if you know, you know that it didn't happen. Now, that being said, since we know that Xavier's sister is the big bad, could they be pulling one over on us? We see him in the trailer fighting the TVA. Now, if he's working for the TVA, he has to end up betraying them somehow, in some way. Maybe it has something to do with them wanting him to kill the Wolverine that he is partnering with, and he doesn't want to do that. But that seems like a very basic thing. Why turn your back on a mission to save the multiverse if you are just going to betray them because you don't want to kill the one guy they want you to kill in order to save the multiverse? Maybe he believes there's another way. But what if it's not that at all? What if... The strange Mr. Paradox in this trailer is indeed our real big bad. Because this is the thing. Ever since the trailer started airing, people have been noticing something off about Mr. Paradox. Sure, he recruits Deadpool into the TVA, and he tells him that he's going to save the multiverse. He's going to be the one to save everything. And then what happens? We see him fighting them? But what if he's not actually fighting against the TVA, but only certain elements of the TVA? More specifically, the ones that are loyal to Mr. Paradox. Now, I noticed a couple things that I don't hear people talking about. This is the theory that's been floating around, but I haven't heard anything really substantial to confirm this theory. So I kind of started to look into it a bit, and I found something that I haven't heard anybody talk about, but I think is a little bit relevant and possibly proving their theory right. And that is, this is not the first time we have seen the character of Mr. Paradox. Because Mr. Paradox actually appeared in the comic books. A small role in Marvel Comics presiding as the judge over She-Hawk's trial in She-Hawk Volume 2, Issue 3. As a TVA agent, his powers are limited, yet he may have some sort of powers. He is residing over this, and his ruling nearly erases Jennifer Walters, She-Hawk, from history as punishment for her attempting to alter Marvel Comics' time stream by warning Hawkeye of his impending death. He does, however, reappear alongside two other familiar justices, Mr. Mobius and Mr. Euro Burrows. So, you see, this isn't even the first time he appeared. However, there is another reason I think this character could be important. So, from this point on, we're just going to be focusing on the Marvel cinematic universe, Loki, the TV show, and things like that to kind of determine and decipher who this character might be. So, yes, they have appeared in the MCU as well.
So that's very important to also remember. So from this point forward, we're going to disassociate this version of the character from the comic book version of the character. Even though it is a direct name reference and probably is meant to be this character specifically. In order for the theory to work, we have to assume that it could also be a bit more because Marvel does like to play around. So this is kind of what I found very interesting. If you look at DisneyFandom.com, which is a Disney wiki, so yes, it is like a Wikipedia page and can be somewhat edited. There is a character that appeared before, a character called General Dox. General Dox was actually just known as Dox, a Marvel comic character. So it is a specific Marvel Comics character that made her debut in the second season of Loki. She is a general in the Time Variance Authority who ordered the resetting of countless breached timelines, causing billions of deaths. Now, the thing is, it's not even the, a male character or potentially could it be something else altogether because the character known as General Docs, according to this wiki page, was previously adapted by the MCU as General Docs. So they are saying this is the same character, despite that character being played by a girl and this new character being played by Matthew McFadden. Now, it could just be a coincidence that the two characters share the name, but that does seem a bit on the nose, doesn't it? It seems a bit too much. Could it be that these characters are related? Could it be a code name used for whoever is running the TBA? That they just have the name Dox in there. But then it doesn't make sense to call him Mr. Paradox. Instead, just like this wiki suggests, maybe they are the same character. And maybe he has something to do with this whole mess. And it is Deadpool betraying him. This would set up something different because now you have Deadpool having to betray the TVA in order to save the multiverse, not from Cassandra Nova, but from Mr. Paradox, who could turn out to be even more of a threat than we possibly knew. Maybe he's playing another character. Maybe there's a cameo in there that we're not quite sure about yet. And they've changed this character's face before, according to this wiki. So who's to say that two different actors aren't playing that character in this movie? Maybe even three or four. Maybe some of the things that Deadpool encounters in this movie are mere illusions, mere tricks played by Mr. Paradox. So I kind of do like this theory that's been floating around that Mr. Paradox is the big bad. It just kind of needed to have a way that it could happen because legitimately, if he's fighting against the TVA, there's nothing really threatening about that. He, he fights the TVA, kills the TVA, gets the job done, goes into the multiverse, ends up in the in the normal Marvel universe with all the other characters, and the Fox universe dies forever. Now, if he is fighting against a legitimate threat who has more at stake than we knew to begin with, then this does present another level of a threat. This does actually tell us that the bad guy is more than just a character who is related to someone we've seen before, but may be actually an entity that could go forward into the multiverse and be a bigger threat than we know. 
it could even be that this is another variant of Cain the Conqueror himself. And why not? It could happen just that way. This could be the movie that changes everything you know about Marvel. In fact, isn't that what they promised? So, if it changes everything you knew about the MCU and legitimately brings us into a new MCU era, then they're going to have to have a way that they're going to make something work with a character that previously didn't work out, which is Kane. The character of Kane wasn't working out for them. And with that being the case, why not bring in a variant we've never seen? Why not bring in a threat with their own motives and their own agendas? It could actually prove to be true. But I don't know that this would be a Kane variant, but he definitely does give off secret big bad vibes in the commercial. And I was incredibly shocked to find out that this was an interpretation of the character General Docs. So they are sort of related, which I wouldn't necessarily have thought. But I want to know what you guys are thinking about any of this. Do you think that this is an option? Do you think that this is true? That Paradox, Mr. Paradox, could be the secret big bad to it all? And if so, how do you think this is possible? Let's have a discussion. Because I really want to hear what you guys have to think about all of this. As always, we definitely want to know what you guys think. Make sure you leave us a comment in the comment box below. Make sure you share this video with all of your friends. They're definitely going to want to be a part of the conversation as well. Make sure you hit that like button. It's free. It helps the channel and we appreciate it. Miko says we need more subscribers and you don't want to disappoint Miko. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell while you're down there so you don't miss a single video we do. And then friends, at the end of the day, I know it, you know it, and Miko knows it. Fandom is family.